thank the Lord for his goodness and we thank him for his faithfulness and keep thanking him for our Saturday team, the brethren that pray for us in the secret, taking their place, traveling, breaking the ground, clearing up every thing. It's amazing what the Lord in, is doing. So today we're going to continue with our teaching in the book of Matthew chapter 5. And today we are going to look at verse 17 and 18, Christ being the fulfillment of the law. Father, we pray this morning that you speak to us, open our eyes and to go through the scriptures, to read the truth in them. Lord, may your word, the light in your word, be shed abroad in our heart to comprehend, to understand, and to see deeper the secrets and the mysteries in your word. May your word, precious Father, come into our hearts today in Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So let's read the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17 and 18 the bible says think not that i am come to destroy the law or the prophets i am not come to destroy but to fulfill for verily i say unto you till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled amen you know, let's just look at these two things. You know, um, a lot of people said um, the Old Testament is um, God concealed and the New Testament is God revealed. Whatever phrase or whatever, you know, um, you know, anything you want to talk about it. But let's see, the Bible says that Jesus Yeshua, Hamashiach himself saying that he had not come to destroy, but he had come to fulfill the law. So going by that, we can see that Christ is the fulfillment of the law. The law was the word and he is the word. The law was written. The Bible says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. So the law, Moses went to the mount and then and got it written in tablets of stone and then Came down, although he broke it because of the people's behavior, but then he received another one. So that law was the word of God. And here in our midst, in our heart today, living in us is the word himself. So there is no way to fulfill him without him. Amen. So those who are reading the law outside of him, there's no way you fulfill the law without Christ because he is the law he is the word so all those going by holding on to old testament and then says nah it didn't happen it's not fulfilled yet because all the prophecies as we're going to see today from some of the scriptures points towards him and he also made reference to all of them when he is speaking so and then so here we can now see that um everything all about him all as he had commanded are all from him he alone has the power to live without sin which man was living in and then the law came to him so he gave the power to be sons and he will look and he also looks like the father so the struggle over sin that made law to be put in place as we see in the book of Romans chapter 7 is something that Christ had come to take those things away. Let's look at the book of um, Romans chapter 8 verse from verse 1 to 4 verse 2 in particular says for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death for that which the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh god sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us 
who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Powerful place to read. Powerful place explaining. Yes, we were on the scene. And it was a do or die. It was a carrot and a stick. It was you do this, you get that tooth for that. But when Christ came, the law that was a schoolmaster that we were not able, that we couldn't and wouldn't have been able anyway to fulfill, Christ came to fulfill all of them. And on the cross, he said, it is finished, all of them. He fulfilled all and released grace to us. That's why today, brethren, we can be born again. And his spirit dwells in us, who teaches us all things, guides us in all things, reveal all things to us, and comforts us. That's what the Holy Spirit is there. So he directs us. He shows us what to do, what to say, what not to say. He guides us. He, he's there to shine his light you know, in dark places so that we can see clearer. Hallelujah. That's the fulfillment of the law. In First John chapter 4, sorry, First John chapter 5, verse 20, and the Bible says, And we know that the Son is, the Son of God is come and had given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true even his son jesus christ this is the true god the eternal life amen that is it the fulfillment of everything just as where we read before in the thing in which the law could not do for us and here he says that we may have understanding that christ is the fulfillment of the law and then we may know him that is true because he is true and that he is the true God, the eternal life. The one that gave the law and also the one that came to fulfill that law in our lives. Is that not wonderful? That's excellent. These are the things we hold on, believe in, even when it looks like ah. I don't know what to do. Can I? And I want to say to someone who is going through some besetting sin or some things that, you know, you struggled with it. It is not going. You don't know what to do. Why not release it to Christ today? He had fulfilled all these. This should be our attitude. That thing that overtakes you. You know, whatever it is, is it lying? Is it stubbornness? Is it people being very recalcitrant? Is it people not moving or bulging? You know, a little bit thin, you know, anger, taking things personally. It, it can span out so many ways. Some of them are not outright sin, but they are just the way our culture had fashioned us, our environment when we were growing. We were not told. So we didn't even know that this is wrong or this is the right way to do it. But growing up and knowing these things, it is now the time to now talk to the Lord and say, you fulfilled the law for me. I hand it over. Because if you want to go by the law, Haha, <laughs> you rise today and tomorrow you're flat on the floor. And that's not what we want to do. And then you we, you just find out that we can't help ourselves. So the teaching today is to be rest assured and to have the confidence and to hand over our life, our issues, everything about us to him. All that we're reading and it looks like, wow, it's a big mountain. We can't climb over it. Christ has fulfilled all all of them for us in john chapter 1 14 to 16 he says there and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth john bear witness of him and cried saying this was he of whom i speak he that cometh after me is preferred before me and he was before me and of his fullness have we all received grace for grace amen that's all he came that we might receive the grace the grace we wouldn't have before because we were sold on, on the sin the law is a schoolmaster out there with some with a whip, 
you know, to punish and then people are under it. Now, the Lord Yeshua Jesus had come and released grace. Amen. This is a beautiful place. It says, a grace for grace. So we walk in grace daily. We walk in, in, that, in the fullness of that grace. And it's for everyone who will ask and say, Lord, I need this grace. Grace to go by. Grace to get by. Grace to carry on. Grace for every day. You know, you know that song. I love it so much. You know, it says, grace not yet discovered. Grace not yet uncovered. Grace from his bountiful star. Oh, grace to cross the river. Grace to face forever. And he will give new grace when it's my time to go. That great, that song on grace ministers, Christ, God's grace came with the fulfillment of the law in him. The Ten Commandments was fulfilled in him, brethren. All the sundry laws and then um, ordinances and then offering sacrifices and all those things were all fulfilled in him. He did it once and for all on the cross. Amen. He took our sins away. He took our sins away. And keep us singing every day. He took all those things away. He nailed them to the cross. All the worry, all the anxiety, all the cares. He says, leave them with me. He came and bore them. And nailed them to the cross. All the yoke of the law is broken. And now we are free to walk in liberty by his grace. Amen. We are free and we've walked out of the chains and fetters of devil or Satan that puts man in bondage. And he has set us free to now go and sin no more, to walk in that righteousness, to walk in that hope. Are you not walking in the righteousness of God? This is the time to say, Lord, I need to walk in the fullness of your grace, in the liberty where which you have set me free. We're no more in bondage over the things the world run, run to or run for or go after, the things that put them down, depresses them and cause some emotional and psychological problems, mental health illnesses and all those things. Jesus are taking them away. Because he said, cast all your cares upon me. I care it for you. I will take care. I will take over. So when we learn, just that something happened, you know, with these two days. And then on Thursday, Wednesday, I have just been in gratitude to the Lord. It looks like nothing. But brethren, is so much of a gratitude. Seeing what God did for us. You know, he let go into school with his things in the in the van with Pastor Moody only to get to the school and there's no place to move into. What, what will he do? Come back home. The school starts the next day and then the place given to him. But in all these things, what came out of it is that the Lord went ahead of us and just dismantled all the little things we thought we built up. And then we thought it's collapsed. And we're like, Lord, what do we do? And he's like saying, I took them away because they're insufficient. They're not what you did your best, but I am the Lord. I know what is the best. I know where you're looking at. I'm giving it to you. Actually, brethren, I'm so much in gratitude. And since then, till even till yesterday, it's just the Lord. It's just the Lord. The one of yesterday was like, ah, Lord, what do we do? Look at what just came in here now. And the Lord just, I just sat down there and said, you know what? I'm not even going to bother. I'm going to hand it over to you. Now, Lord, we need intervention immediately. Brethren, swiftly, immediately it happened. Testimonies. Wow. Brethren, until you know it and grab it, that Christ is the fulfillment of, of the Holy Script, of the Scripture, whether it is law or not law, he's the fulfillment of all. You will hand over everything to him. They will come like a flood and they will try to put us down immediately before you just look to the left or right. Like people will say before you say Jack, Jack Robinson mm, is on you. Immediately hand it over. Amen. 
And in, and once you have handed it over, stand strong. The scriptures has already been fulfilled on our behalf. Why? Christ is our Paschal Lamb. He is the Paschal Lamb that was sacrificed for all our sins. So no more sin offering, peace offering, um, whatever. So many, so many of them written in the book of Numbers and Deuteronomy. If you want to take your time to read. He is our Paschal Lamb. He's paid the price. He's fulfilled in him once and for all. There's no other sacrifice anymore is being done he is our peace offering no more going for any peace offering anymore the bible called him the prince of peace amen so whatever you just see lord i'm crying i'm calling on you let your peace dwell in my heart that's number one. Oh, may, let me live at peace with other men. That's number two. Lord, let there be peace in our nations and in our countries and our continent. That's the third one. In any every dimension of peace, he had fulfilled them. Amen. He's a jubilee. Hallelujah. He said to the man, he healed. He says, when he says, go and sin no more, you are liberated. When we look at the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to look at the good works he did, the forgiveness of sin, you know, the healing, the even making the dead to rise again. Brethren is absolutely. So he had come. The Bible says, if the Son shall set you free, we shall be free indeed. So he's our jubilee. Amen. All the laws of ordinances and sin we've committed that has tied us down, waiting for the judgment day. The Lord says, mm, taking them away. If only we can trust. If only we can rejoice in this. And brethren, this are rejoicing every day. When people say, oh, these Christians are always quite very happy. What makes us happy? Is it the physical food? Is it going to theaters and to pops and to that? Nah, there's something more valuable. There's things we remember. And what is it? He's my Paschal Lamb. Whoa, he's my Jubilee. So I don't have to serve for 50 years before Satan will set me free. He came and took away his thing and broke his bands and then take, took away the chains and opened the walls and the doors of the prison gate and set us free to walk in newness of life, to walk in holiness and righteousness, to rejoice in him. Wow, brethren, this is awesome. When he says, I came to fulfill, he took away the curses of the law. Hey, if you read the courses of the law, mm, I wonder. When you look at the one of leprosy, if you do this, leprosy will come to you. If you do this, this will come. If you do this, all the males will be smitten. If you do this, oh, brethren, huge, huge, huge. And Jesus came and says, full stop, done with. Now, brethren, I ask myself, what did I do, Lord, to deserve that I'm born in the New Testament? You see? It's nothing like he said to them. Don't think that those Jews who were crushed by the wars or who were destroyed by Herods, that they sinned more. It's all by grace. All by grace. Brethren, that's why we take this grace serious. That's why we don't trample the grace of God on, on to the floor. Well, that's why, brethren, we hold it in high esteem. Don't lose it. It was paid for. It was very expensive. Paid by the blood of Jesus, the blood of Yeshua. So don't handle your Christianity, you know, you know, vaguely and in vain, you know, trying to mix it up with the things of the world. No, hold it preciously for he took away all the curses. There are so many. He's our first fruit offering. First fruit offering. As you're getting it, he has done it all. He is our stripes. He took our stripes. As the Bible says in Deuteronomy 25, 2 and 3. And also in the book of Isaiah. He had taken away. And through the stripes that were given to him, healing had come to us. Through his pain, through his bleeding, through the wound that he sustained, we are made whole. Brethren, that's a good bargain. And we go for it. Rejoice in thanking him. And again and again and again, we ask ourselves, what did we do to deserve this? He's our city of refuge. 
Amen. The Bible says he's a strong tower. The righteous run sing to him and he's safe. The righteous run into him. He's the city of refuge in trouble, in sorrow, in pain, in water, in fire, in whatever it is. Run in. Bigger than any canopy you would think of. Bigger than any bunker you would think of. Bigger than any bullet shield you can think of. Bigger than everything. It doesn't matter what it is. Any kind of security or protection you think we have here on earth. Well, our maker is the ultimate. He's a city of refuge. Thus, he came to fulfill that law. Run into him. You know that song that says, Call upon me in the time of trouble. Call upon me, I will answer you. Call upon me in the time of sorrow. Call upon me, I will answer you. Hallelujah. It says, Call upon me. He's a city of refuge. That burden. That burden, that anxiety, that worry. He says, come unto me, O ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Sure promise from him. Is it just a promise that doesn't come to pass? No, it's just the one that you will open your mouth. He says, before you pray, I have heard you. Look at our father. Everything. But then when you're reading the Bible, your heart is like, wow, wow. Just this sweet, so sweet, so encouraging, so huge that you open and you're reading. I, I tell you, you just feel like sit down, don't do any other thing to carry on when you're reading the promises, you're reading the power of Elohim, you're reading what he has done for us. Look at him saying, I'm your city of refuge. Run. Come in. You shall be saved. May we value this in Yeshua's name. Amen. He's our Passover fulfilled. He's our Passover fulfilled from bondage, from servitude to liberty. Grace upon grace is fulfilled then. That blood that was done in the Old Testament, the blood of the Lamb, and then without blemish that was set on the lintel, so that when the devourer comes at night, he will pass over, done forever in our Yeshua Hamashiach. Amen. In Christ Jesus, the blood speaketh better things than the blood of bulls and rams and of April, because it's been done once and for all. So he is the blood of the Passover. So when sin comes, when Satan comes, it pass over. Remember the song. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass I'll pass over you. The blood of Jesus is all around us, at our forehead, in our hearts, all over. And when the devourer, when the wicked one, when that trouble, when that sorrow comes, pass over. Why? The blood of Jesus. That's why Paul says, from henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear the mark of Jesus Christ. Amen. That mark is on you and that mark is on me. That's what Christ had come to fulfill in us. He's a sin offering. He's a trespass offering. He's a burnt offering. If you can just keep naming them all that they represent in the old, he has done it once and for all. Amen. And what did the Bible say here in the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 12 to 15? The Bible says, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the oppression of God, who had raised him from the dead, and ye being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh. Had he quickened it together with him, having forgiven all our trespasses, blotting out the handwriting and then 
of the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing them to the cross, and having spoiled principalities. Wow, this is like dancing it. It's not like reading it. You see, I'm dancing it. It's like dancing it. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a sure of them openly triumphing over them in it. That's it. That's our dance. That's our daily dance. That's our rejoicing. That's our song that he had spoiled principalities and powers. All the handwritings that the burnt offering, the sin offering, the trespass offering, the peace, just keep naming them. All those handwritings off blotted out in him so brethren why can't we rejoice and sing glory to him and sing hallelujah so when you're worshiping when you're singing you're not just singing for singing sake there's something behind your songs there's something behind your dancing there's something behind your rejoicing there's things why your mouth is saying something is singing those words out your heart is filled with gratitude for what he has done he has fulfilled all these things wow so when you're dancing the song, what the Lord has done for me, oh, I cannot tell it all. Oh, what the Lord has done for me. Yes, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell it all. He washed me and saved me from sin. Oh, I can shout hallelujah. I can shout hallelujah. I can shout. Oh, shout Praise the Lord, so I can shout hallelujah, I can shout hallelujah, I can shout praise the Lord, what the Lord has done for me, yes, I cannot tell it all, oh, what the Lord has done for me, yes, I cannot tell them all, what the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all, he washed me and saved me from sin, oh, I can shout hallelujah, I can shout hallelujah, Possibly is dancing in front of me, I can shout Shout, shout, praise the Lord. Oh, I can shout, hallelujah. I can shout, hallelujah. I can shout, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Christ is the fulfillment. He did it. Brethren, look, he blotted them all out. And he said to me, go. He set me free. Go, sin no more. You are set at free. It is done and done and done with. And then he crowned it in verse 18 and says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. All of them. So there's not one he did and didn't do the other one. There's not one he says, well, I did 80%, it's still A stars. I did 95%, it's still 9. It with the new GCSE grading. No, he did 100%. All of them, he wiped them. He says, not heaven and earth shall pass. And in Luke 21, 32 and 33 says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not his word. They were all done. So it's not half and half. Ezekiel 12, 12, 25. He said, For I am the Lord. I will speak, and the word that I speak shall come to pass, and it shall no more be prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it, say the Lord. Yo, that. So what did the Bible say concerning you? It's all done, completed. What is the will of God? What is it that you are worrying, you're wondering? They're all written in the Bible. Just go there and pick up. So many of them promises the fulfillment and get encouraged. Psalm 111, 7 and 8 says, The works of his hand are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast and forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. Forever and ever. Nothing will move the word of God. Nothing will shift it. 
is all accomplished in truth and in righteousness. He sent redemption unto his people. He had commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. This is awesome. Brethren, very, very awesome. He had fulfilled them all of the law. I don't want to rush it. Maybe we start with it in the morning tomorrow to talk about everything written in Genesis, Deuteronomy, Isaiah, Daniel, Micah, Haggai, Malak, all the prophets. Done. Amen. Oh, done. So what do you do? Anyone, when you see it looms large in front of you, what do you say? Done deal. Done. Christ have done them. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you this morning and we give you praise. Thank you for standing in there for us. Thank you for taking our place. Thank you for fulfilling the law, which we wouldn't have. No way. Gone there. Anywhere halfway in fulfilling them. But you took them all away and set us free. I said, we can go. Glory be to your name. We're so grateful. Help each and every one of us to appropriate this. Help each and every one of us to see, open our eyes of understanding, to realize and to know what you have done for us so that we can stand strong in our faith in you. And for those of us who have not joined in, who are saying, what is it all about? Today, precious Father, as they have heard these, give them the grace to repent from their sin and to seek you and to come to you, the only true and wise Elohim. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.